everybody, welcome to Home Group this month. We're so glad that you are choosing to be in a small group and to get to know the family of God and go through this book with us, um, The Circle Maker by Mark Batterson. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. It's so much good truth in it that we can dig into. And so we're going to talk about that today. You know, in the very beginning of the book, we hear about Honey and how he did something a little crazy back in the day. He drew a circle and had the audacity to tell God he was not leaving the circle until they got their answer to prayer of rain. No one else was doing that then. We've talked about it um, a good bit now, and it still blows my mind to think that, that he was that bold in his faith and in his prayer life, and he said, hey, we need this, and God, I'm believing you for it. And so the concept of circle making in our prayer life is something that we can just really grow in and we can go to new levels and not just become stagnant and we're going to talk about a concept that mark brings up in chapter five tonight and it's the foolishness of faith he actually says that faith is the willingness to look foolish that's a kind of a bold thing we don't tend to like to look foolish we like to have it all figured out. We like to, you know, know what we're doing and have a clear path in life. But when God calls us to something, it tends to not make sense. It tends to get us into drawing a circle in the sand amongst our whole village. And, um, you know, there's so many acts in the Bible where they didn't draw literal circles, but they did some crazy things and they paid off big time. If we think back on some of the, just a few things to list, Noah, he built an ark in the middle of a desert where rain wasn't a thing because God told him to. The Israelites marched around the city of Jericho for days and then all of a sudden on the seventh day they shouted. That didn't make a lot of sense. David approached a giant with a slingshot. No one else had tried that. The wise men went on a long journey following a star. And then Peter decided to step out of the boat in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. These are things that if you just came on the scene and saw them happening, they look foolish. But when God's in the middle of it, when you are called to it in faith, then God will show up and he will do big things. You know, he, he didn't leave no answer for them because Noah saved his family from the flood. The Israelites saw this, the walls of Jericho fall. David conquered the giant. The wise men found the savior they were seeking and Peter actually walked on water. But it took faith, it took willing to look foolish to man to do those things. So I wanna ask you, is there anything that God's called you to before? And you're like, ah, that just, that's a little too crazy for me. Did you act on it? Did you put it back and say, maybe not right now? Think on these things. I wanna tell you a story about our family right now. Our son, Devin, he's an adopted son. I'm not old enough to be his mom. A joy that God brought to our life that we weren't expecting, and God really just grafted him into us. Well, seven years ago, he entered the field of modeling. He wasn't even looking for it, but it, the door opened and he stepped into it and he did so well. That boy dominated the Dallas modeling market. He was in all the JCPenney ads for so long. And so he was doing well in this thing. And then four years ago, God called him so clearly to move to LA. Such a different thing than being in the Dallas market where he lived at home and he had family and he had friends and he had um, just his covering of people, but God called him to go move to LA, to Los Angeles, to pursue not just modeling, but acting. That's a foolish looking thing because we know that thousands of people every year move to LA to pursue these dreams and they never see it fulfilled. They never get that big break. And Devin chose to answer God's call. He chose to leave home, to leave family, to go where he didn't have any friends but one, he didn't have a job, he didn't have promises of success, but he had the call of God. And he went. And he then 
that was four years ago that he moved to LA. Four years. Four years of being away from family, four years of going to casting after casting, of working other jobs, of trusting and praying and all the things, but four years have gone by. You know, at the year, end of year one, he could have come back home where it was safe and said, well, I tried, God. At the end of year two, he could have come back home and said, I tried two years. At the end of year three, he could have come back home and said, I tried three years, but he kept on. And now here we are four years into this. And what do you know? Right now, today, when we're filming this, I'm able to tell you that he has been placed in, he's been cast basically into this multi-episode, major market, primetime TV show. It's a huge break, a huge victory. And he would not have seen that fulfilled if he would have given up at the end of year one. He kept being willing to look foolish in man's eyes and staying, even when he hadn't yet had the big break. And so now that the night that you're watching this, who knows exactly what will have changed by then. But I can tell you that he has seen God bring a breakthrough. In all those years, though, it... It sounded like foolish, foolish, foolish. But God was seeing him as faithful, faithful, faithful. And so that's, that's what we're called to, to be faithful, to be willing to look silly to man for what God is calling us to do. You know, in all of this story, there was so much prayer that went into it. As a mom, for him, I cried when he left, and then I just prayed and prayed and prayed. I look back after reading the circle maker now and hearing about Honey and the concept of praying circles around our, our dreams. I know that I was doing that for him, that I prayed circles around his dreams. But I wasn't the only one praying. He had to pray and he had to trust God as well. And the fruit of not giving up is so worth what God nudges us to act and do. I want to ask you, if you're being nudged to things that God's calling you to, are you praying circles around them? Have you really committed to, to digging into those things in life? Have you said no maybe and said, God, it's too big for me. There's no way I can do that. It's too comfortable where I am maybe. Or are you submitting your heart to him in prayer and asking and believing and even a crazy concept of are you thanking him in advance because if he calls you to do something he will see it through but are you thanking him while you're in the process before you can see it you know in chapter 5 of, of the book Mark Batterson also talks about that the bigger you dream the more you need to pray and then he says but hand in hand the more you pray the bigger your dream should be so with God, when, we, when he gives us a big dream that's too big for us, that's a good cue that it's probably from him. Because if it's too big for us, we need him in it. But when he does that, it gives an opportunity for him to do something beyond our expectations. Like defeating the giant with a pebble. Like the walls of Jericho coming down with marching and eventually a shout. Like Peter walking on water. It takes faith and being willing to look foolish no matter what your neighbors think that you are seeking what God has for you. I just wanna ask you a few other questions. Are you dreaming big? Are you allowing God to let you dream big? And then as he places those callings and those dreams in your heart, are you praying through them? Are you giving them to him? Are there things you laid down that maybe you're thinking about tonight and maybe he's stirring those things up that you need to pick back up? There's something in my life that he stirred in me and I did all I could and then I've waited and waited and he stirred that back up in my heart. He said, hey, it's still a thing for you. And so I'm having, I'm praying circles around this thing and trusting him that he will take care of the parts that I can't do. So I wanna challenge you. Let him speak to you about those things. What are things that he's stirring up in your mind or brand new dreams that he's going to bring? Pray circles around those things. God bless you.